Hey, I'm Mark Morgenstern. Welcome to my video series on the human side of buying and selling businesses. And it's all based on one of my maxims. People, not spreadsheets, are the epicenter of every deal. There have been lots of influences on my life. The 400 deals I've done is certainly part of them. Selling encyclopedias door to door was part of it. Following the Grateful Dead for five decades was part of it. It's also worth mentioning that I taught a course at UC Berkeley that I created called Street Smart Startups. It was all based on my book, The Soul of the Deal. My personal masterclass consisted of following the Grateful Dead for five decades. Because the Dead were a jam band. Every time they played a song, it was different. It might be longer, it might be shorter, but it was different. Some might be fabulous, some might not be fabulous, but they were still good, and they took risks. They embraced change. They didn't run away from it as most people do, and that gave them the ability to improvise constantly, and that's what they did. And to me, that's what you need to do in a deal. There's a term I created that I think synthesizes that. Deal makers who take that approach, that philosophy, should be called deal jammers. They're prepared to go where other people aren't. They're prepared to explore unconventional ideas. They're explored to take risk and they embrace it. That makes a deal jammer. And deal jammers can accomplish things only deal makers can't because they're willing to go further outside of the box with the intense listening that is the predicate for any jam band. You learn to listen differently. You learn to listen to engage. You listen to learn to build. You're not listening the way a lawyer might. Lawyers are trained to be advocates. They take a position and they hold to that position. When they listen, what they're trying to do is find a way to tell you you're wrong. How can we rebut what you just said? How can I distinguish it? And that may make for very good lawyering, but it doesn't always make for very good deal jamming. The key is engaged, active listening, being open to possibility, embracing uncertainty. Every gig they played was different. Every deal is different. There are different people in the play. They have different motivations. They react differently. Here's a way of thinking about it. Bad deal makers try to put 10 pounds of potatoes into a five pound bag. They've already decided what the outcome is. They have a five pound bag, that's what they want. You have to cram your way into it. Deals aren't cookie cutters. It doesn't work that way. Deal jamming, like songwriting, is 51% craft and only 49% feel. It's emotional intelligence combined with substantive knowledge. You need both to become a deal jammer. Here's some takeaways from four decades, 50 years of following the dead, and hundreds of transactions. Sometimes your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Sometimes your greatest weakness is your greater strength. When you have nothing to lose, you have nothing to lose. That freedom should translate in you being willing to take what would otherwise be an unreasonable risk. But if you've got nothing to lose, it's not much of a risk. It really isn't. So do it. Improvise. Create something new. Create some urgency. Create scarcity. You have all of those tools at your disposal. Think about all the people in the deal circle and think about how you can apply those principles to them. Improvising is risk taking. Some people like it. Some people don't. If you don't, you shouldn't. If you do, you should. What you have to recognize is that means you're gonna embrace uncertainty because transactions aren't static. They don't sit still. They're moving. Energy is gonna go back and forth. There are risks. If you explore what somebody else wants to explore and it wasn't how you were thinking about the deal, it may be a good result. You may also find that it's a path that leads to absolutely nowhere. You're stuck. And if you do find yourself stuck, think about what the Grateful Dead said. You're not much of an explorer if you're not lost sometimes. I take comfort in that. Let me sort of end with some tactics I'm gonna suggest that you may wanna try. You're sitting at a table. The person on the other side of the table says, I want ABC. You think to yourself, no, I can't agree to ABC. That just doesn't work. But you say, I'll tell you what, I'm willing to explore ABC as long as you understand that exploring it doesn't mean it's commitment. It doesn't mean I'm willing to go down that path. It doesn't mean I think it's a good path, but I'm perfectly prepared to acknowledge what you said and see what happens. Tell me how it hurts me. Tell me how it helps you. Tell me why you care about it in the first place. And then we'll talk about it. 
If you say at the beginning of all of that that exploration is not commitment, then you have a fail-safe for yourself. You have the whole discussion about ABC. Maybe it did turn out to be something where the reward to the buyer was enormous, the risk and cost to you as a seller was very minimal. Maybe you actually should agree to that deal. But if you don't, you have a very graceful way out because you already set it up. You're gonna say, hey, buyer, I really appreciate the education about ABC. I now understand much better why you wanted it. I understand its cost to me. I understand its burden to me. I understand its reward to you. But even with all of that knowledge and education, it's still not a place I can go. So unfortunately, we need to go down another path. You've broken that off, but did you break it off unpleasantly? No. And the worst thing that happens is, your counterparty knows you cared enough to try. You spent some energy on it. That's a good thing. And even doing that validates who they are, and people like to be validated. It's always a good idea if your counterparty knows that you validated them. I wish I could tell you that will always work. It won't, but taking that chance, trying that exploration, going down that path, tremendously increases your odds of success. You've created an opportunity that otherwise wouldn't exist. If you've listened to all of this, and I'd like to say thank you for that, and you want to learn more, I'd encourage you to pick up a copy of The Soul of the Deal. Find a link in the description of this video.